The idea about this, this session is to increase teacher confidence in using Studio and UMoo. And the other thing is to try and give you some practical ideas as how you can use it in your day-to-day -day teaching. So my, my point about that is that the way that you would teach as an instrumental teacher is very is well not very different but pretty different to how a classroom teacher would would use it and um, we're really conscious that we want you to try and use it for your day-to-day -day teaching so that's the focus that we're going to have when we're doing this today but there are still uh, there will still be a lot of crossover between the way that you would teach in one-to-one -one or small group and curriculum stuff as well so what we're going to have a look at is how you log in how you can add some students in how you find the U Studio app within the website, what the basic navigation around the door, what the different track types are, how you can do some sequencing with it, how you can do some recording with it, and how to import a backing track and a video. And there's a bit of a caveat with that last bit, which is why I've left it till the end. I'm using my iPad. And the reason that I've decided to do that is because the likelihood is, is that you as an LMS teacher will probably be using your LMS iPad in a in a one-to-one -one session. It does also, of course, work on your laptop, or I think it will even work on your smartphone if you really wanted it to. The idea being that you and kids who are using it have access to it whenever and wherever, wherever you want, as long as you've got some sort of an internet connection you can access it. So if you go to the Lancashire Music Hub website, to our homepage, where there's all that sort of thing, all, all the stuff that you can use there. And if you look right up at the top, you can see just under the address bar, it says login to Charanga, teachers, students, VIP studio sessions. So of course we want teachers. So I'm going to click on teachers and it will ask you for your username or your email address and your password. So I'm going to put my username and password in. I've been and decided to save it on my iPad. So it does it for me. You can see now that we are logged into Charanga two sections that we're going to look at today. Again, just under, underneath the dress bar, you can see my workspace in Yumu. That's the first thing that we're going to look at. And then in the tabs, just above the white bit, you can see that there's instrumental music balancing, primary music hub, and then U Studio. And that's the other bit that we're going to look at. Click on Yumu, you get a little menu and you see that there's a guide. There's different packages that you can, uh, that you can share with your students. You can see Yumu as your students do and then instrumental units. If you want to go into your way of using Yumu, then you wouldn't click on Yumu, you would click on my workspace instead. All your library and your students. So you can add any resources into different areas. So you can put them in my resources or my lessons or my units or my schemes, whatever you want. The most important thing I think for you to have a look at today is for you to know how to add students that you're teaching into your group. So I'm going to click on my student groups. I only have one class there called test group, which was when I was just playing around with it. If you see the big green button that says create group, you may well want to set a group for each student that you teach if they're all at different levels. Or if you have a small group, if you have four or five children together, you might create one group for them. Or if you have a whole class, you might want to you might want to create a group for them. That's completely up to you. To to save you from having to add resources for every single student individually, you can put them together into a group if you want to give them the same resource. So I'm going to click create group. I'm going to give it a name and I will call it Umu test and then you can see that i've now got a class called umu test and there's various things that you can do we can add students you can even add extra members of staff if you click on teachers you can put assignments in you can create an assignment you can put some packages in the most important thing is how to add students so you have two ways of doing this you can either click on the add students tab or you can see that there's a useful link in the dotted line bit in the middle of the screen there that says click on the add students tab above to add students to this group and there you can see when i click on add students we can type in first name, last name, and go all the way down. That's fairly straightforward. You just type the name in and then add students and you're fine. But if you have quite a large group, that makes it quite difficult and quite time consuming for you to actually add them all in. So one of the brilliant functionalities that Charanga put in here is that you can literally just copy and paste out of a spreadsheet and it does it all for you. So I'm just going to select all of those names. There we go. And I'm going to copy them. And then when I go back to Umu, I click on the first one. I'm going to hold my finger down and then I can paste. And you can see that it will just put all the names in there for me, no problem. If your first name and your last name happen to be the wrong way around, you can just click on the button that says swap first names and last names and it'll do it for you. And then when I've got all my students in there, I can click add students and it will add them into my group. So you can now see in this UMU test class, we have our six students 
Donald Jim, Lars Ludwig, Tom and Wolfgang Amadeus, and they're all ready to go. You can now, once you've added them to the class, you can then give the students their login. So it's automatically created a login for them. So you can see there Donald Trump's login letter. I can click on that and it will show that to me. It's downloaded it. You can also do a printable sticker sheet with everything in it and you can change the format of that however you want it to be. So you can print that out and give them to the class teacher or you can do it as a spreadsheet however you want to do it and it's just dead easy to create something so that the kids know how to log in the other thing that is brilliant with Yumi is that if you set a an assignment however however you want to do it you can then message your students on there as well Charanga have assured us that it is all completely covered and you can turn messaging off if something untoward happens so if I wanted to message Donald Trump I would uh, click on his name messages and then I can send Donald a message hi Donald have you had a chance to yet and then donald would see that and he would have an opportunity to reply to that if he wanted to i really recommend that you have a have a bit of a play with it some of you may well be very familiar with that already i'm sure you'll be able to help other people if you wanted to so we go back to charanga home and let's have a let's have a quick look at you studio so if you look at the tabs going across the top you have the U Studio tab on the right hand side there. So I'm going to click on that and you get a few options. There's the app and then there's some little schemes of work that you can use hip hop crime and a spooky story. I'm going to click on U Studio app and I'm going to lay the microphone. I'm going to get rid of that box. Click here to show the main menu, which we know. The way that I try and explain a door is that there are tracks that go across the screen and they stack up on top of each other from top to bottom, and then time goes from left to right. If you try and think about each track that you add as a player in your virtual band, and then they could put one instrument down and pick up a different instrument and play the same notes, but it will sound different because it's set to a different instrument. That's that's the, the general way of having a look at it. So you can see that we've got the ruler going across the top. One, two, three, four. And I'm just using my finger here. It's a shame you can't see it. I'm just using my finger to drag the play line there on my iPad, just dragging it back and forth across the screen. Dead easy to go back to the beginning. You just pick it up and move it if you want to go back to the beginning of your project. You can see your general play, stop, rewind, and whatnot buttons there. So one of the things that Ch Charanga have tried to do here is to label everything as well so that we can see where play and stop and record is. So if I press play, you can see that the green line starts to move across the screen and it will play anything that it goes across. And the reason that we can't hear anything at the moment is because there's nothing to play. So I'm going to press stop, I'll press rewind and it will go right back to the beginning. If you want to go to a certain point, you can just pick up the green and move it across to wherever you want to go. Other things that you can change, if you look in the middle, you've got your tempo and your time signature. So at the moment, this project is running at 110 beats a minute and it's in 4.4. You can change that if you wanted to. So you wanted to go a little bit slower. So I'm going to go down to 90 beats a minute. So you can see that I've changed to 5.4 there. I'm going to go back to 4.4. You can also change the key that you're working in as well. Those all being musicians, we're familiar with keys, major and minor. The buttons on the right hand side, sounds, keys, mix, setup and help. I'll, I'll talk about those uh, in a little bit a second and then if you look all the way across the other side you can see tools there and these are things that you can use and i'll show you how to use these later on uh, in order to edit what you've put in if we try and add a track you can see just underneath tools that it says add new track or plus new track so if i click on that with my finger you can see that there are various different types of tracks there drum subtract polychrome and sound bank and score to a certain extent but certainly the top four all use a technology called midi so basically what midi is is it's just a set of instructions so you're telling the computer or your iPad or whatever, what note do you want? How long do you want it to last for? How loud do you want it to be? And what sort of a sound do you want it to be? And all that information is already in your iPad so that all or your computer. So all that it does is translates that, that information into a sound. And that is literally all it does. So I'm going to choose sound bank to start off with. So I'll click on sound bank and you can see there that it creates a track and anything that we put into this track in this sort of an area will then be played on the sound that is, is particularly set to. So if I click on the little infinity sign there, you can see that we're set to acoustic grand piano and you can change a few of the settings like attack, decay, sustain, release and whatnot. If I click on acoustic grand piano, we can change that to other things as well. So let's put it onto a guitar sound and we'll go a steel strung acoustic guitar. And there we go. I'm then just going to X that off on the right hand side. 
just so that we can see what we're doing. There's two ways that you can put notes into this. You can either do sequencing, which I'll talk about in a minute, or you can record. Now, obviously, you can't record any MIDI unless you have a device for recording MIDI. So if you're using a computer, you can just plug a standard piano keyboard type thing in. Uh, most of them work by, by USB these days. And Studio will take that signal. So you can play into it using your keyboard and then edit the notes afterwards. On your iPad, if I double click just next to it there you can see that i've created some blank space if i then double click on that blank space it will open up underneath and i can click some notes in however i want them to be and if we listen to what that sounds like i press play and i'm obviously going to be a millionaire because i've created something amazing if i add another new track let's say a polychrome track and i pick that ribbon up and drag it down onto the the track below it will play exactly the same thing but on a different sound so that hopefully makes you gets you to realize that it's literally just a piece of information that the computer translates rather than it being an actual sound and that's the that's the beauty of using midi that it's it's very very editable the the technology over the past kind of 10 15 years or so has really moved on so you can get some really really realistic sounding uh, midi that you can edit later on without having to record it over and over and over again the way to delete a track on your ipad if you hold down if you see the the kind of green set of three circles just next to where it says polychrome you just hold your finger down on there on your ipad you'll get a little menu that you can then delete that track and i'm going to delete the sound bank channel as well delete track and there we go we're back to how we work if i then try and add a different sort of track let's say an audio track this is a different kettle of fish so an audio track is literally a recording of a real sound so if i was to press record now it would probably record from my microphone on my ipad and you can hear and you can use it to record whatever you want so i'm going to press record and that gets it ready to record and this is where it is slightly different to some of those that you have to press play to actually start it recording so it's ready one two testing testing one two so you can see now that it's recorded an audio clip and if i play that back one two testing testing one two so that is actually my voice so that's one of the ways and here's my first practical tip that you can record yourself playing for a kid as a way of modeling how things are supposed to sound and they can use your modeling as a way of learning to play what it is that you want them to play you could set them an assignment to say right use you studio to record a performance that, of this piece that we're working on and then they can submit that to you and you can have a look at it and give them some feedback on it rather than it being a whole week before they have the next lesson so i'm going to get rid of that i'll hold my finger on it delete and i'm going to delete that track and there we go and then the final track type that i'm going to talk about is the score one so i'm going to add a score track and this has very similar sounds to the ones that we had before i'm going to leave it on acoustic grand piano and i'm going to double click next to my track and that will create some blank space i can then double click on the blank space and it will create a score so you can see that we've got two blank bars there ready to put some notes in and this is very similar to sibelius or mu score the way to put notes in you can see that i've selected crotchets there at the top i could change to minims if i wanted to semi breeze i'm going to put some crotchets in i'm going to click on the bar that i want to put some notes in so it goes yellow and then if i put my hold my finger down it will put the notes in for me on a c i have to say it's much easier on a on a computer because you can use your mouse your trackpad so i'm going to try and put the next note in as an e let's change to a semi breeze i want it to go there so i'm clicking on it and i put it in there right so i put an a in there i wanted it to be a g so i can just press the down arrow a couple of times to move it down to a G and it's dead easy to edit the notes that you've put in. Bar two, a quaver in on a D. I wanted it to be a C, so I'm gonna move it down. You can move the yellow box left and right for wherever you want to put your notes into, which is pretty useful. I wanted that to be a D, so I'm gonna move it down again. Put my next one on as an E. There we go, and so on and so on and so on. You get the idea. So you can go back and then you can get it to play that. genius and you can get that to play back so you could if you were going to try and do a little bit of composition in your lessons you could use this if you wanted to you could set again you could set an assignment to say right uh, i want you to write me a melody that only uses crotchets and minims and only uses c to g and i want it to have a nice shape that goes up and it goes down um, and you could set them that assignment and then again they can submit that to you and you can give them some pretty much real-time feedback if they use samples um you, and you say right i want you to add a melody to this sample then then you can you can multi-track it rather than it just being a, a single melody line i'm just going to double click again and it will create a blank 
ribbon chunk whatever you want to call it that isn't long enough for what i want to do so if i just get hold of the end of that ribbon and drag it then it will make that ribbon longer so when i double click on it i've now got four bars instead of just one and you can see in that lower region there that i've got bar one and then the beats one two three four bar two one, two, three, four, bar three, one, two, three, four, bar four, one, two, three, four. On the left-hand side, I've got my piano keyboard turned on its side, and you can see that the notes kind of run bottom to top instead of left to right. And we can put the notes in there. So if I wanted, to, let's say, a C major scale in, in crotchets, so I can just click in. I literally just click once where I want it to go. I can extend the length of that just by dragging my finger across on the end of the note. It is a little bit clunky on iPad, I will admit, but it's just something that fully improve over time. And you can see that we're just adding the notes in as we're going along. And you can put in your notes however you want them to be, going up the scale or whatever. There we go. A useful thing, it's probably a good time to talk about the tools now. So the tools bit there, if you click delete at the bottom of that, it will delete whatever's highlighted. So I just click delete and it put in, it got rid of that extra note that, that I didn't want. You can click in notes, you can sequence notes, however you want them to be. And we can play that. Yeah, obviously that's really, really boring and you'll probably want to put in things that are much more interesting than that. If you hold your finger down on the blue ribbon bit, there's a few things that you can then do with it. You can duplicate it. So you just get an extra copy of it, just copy and paste in. You can loop that bit if you want. And then what will happen is we'll just play around that bit over and over again. So it just keeps going back. And you can turn that off by pressing your loop button there if you want to. You can delete it. There we go. You can change the color. You can put a name on it. Highlight what you want to copy and then you can copy and paste it however you want it to be. So you can put notes in on the piano roll there. I'm going to get rid of that track. And I'm going to sequence drums now. So I've done a, a drum track. I'm going to double click next to it to add in a blank space. I'm going to double click on that blank space. You can see that the grid underneath is now slightly different in that it now has drum instruments on the left hand side rather than the piano keyboard. And again, you can change the grid you can change the grid to whatever you want. So if you wanted to sequence a drum beat, if not necessarily sequencing drum beats is something that you would use in an individual lesson, but one of the things that I've used before is just using it to practice scales. Sequence yourself a little drum beat and then play your scales along to your drum beat. It just makes playing scales of that a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to do a kick drum on the first beat, snare drum on the second, three and on my kick drum, and then four. And I'm going to put some awesome 16th notes going across. I'm literally just tapping the notes in here. And I'm going to loop that bar. There's a, a stick beat for Ben to spit some rhymes out. It's dead easy to sequence a quick drum track. You can then duplicate that. You hold your finger on the little ribbon that you've created. And you can do that as many times as you want. Or like I say, you can loop it round, however you want to do it. The key, the key thing, let's say we wanted to go into uh, E flat minor. There's different versions of the scale that you wanted to do. So but we'll go with natural minor just to stick with the key signature. And I'm going to add a sound bank track when i create a blank space now you can see that the piano keys have little dots on them so a red dot is your your key note so you can see that e flat there has a red dot in it and then all the blue dots are the notes of the scale it's another way of kind of showing tones and semitones in scales and, and stuff like that so c for example doesn't have a dot in it because it's not part of the e flat natural minor scale and it's just another way that you can try and explain things importing audio now if you uh, look on your little buttons on the on the top right hand side sounds keys mix setup help if you do sounds you, you've got various different things uh, that you can use there so you've got your instruments you there your different types of track that we've already talked about and you've got audio midi video and project files these are samples that you can use so for example if we want some funky house i'm going to click on funky house and let's put some bass in so i'm just going to get hold of that and i think if i double click on it it'll put it in or i think i can probably drag and drop it as well if I wanted to. I'll just get rid of that for a sec and you can listen to that. Nice. Let's put some loops in. Wonky house groove. Wonk beat. Let's go with that. I'm going to double click on that. There we go. That looks like something a bit more juicy. Yeah. And let's duplicate that. And there we go. Tell me if that's not quite right, is it? So we probably want to put that there and put that there. There we go. It's a bit more, more like it.
So you get the you get the idea that you can drag and drop. If you go to project files, you can import your own files. If you're doing a rock school, for example, rock school are very obviously big with the backing tracks. You can import your backing track into U Studio and then send it home with the kids. It doesn't actually work yet on iPad. It works brilliantly on computer, but it doesn't work on iPad. So if you do import audio file and then do choose file, you can see that I, I've got some audio files there. Now they're all MP3s and WAVs, but it's not letting me select those yet. And this is what I brought up. But the idea is, is that you can drag and drop those in and then you could get the kids to record themselves playing along to the backing track and then they've got it there. If you're doing ABRSM and you can manage to download a backing track um, off YouTube or whatever, you can then import that. So an opportunity for you to use piano accompaniments if you, if you want to as well. Or if you're capable, obviously, you can record the piano accompaniments in yourself just using an audio track. You can set it to auto save there. You can do auto save, put the top, give it a name, pants piece, and then it'll auto save it. Or if you want to save it, you can do file, save or save as or export. You can export it as audio if you want to, and then you can email it if you really, really wanted to. Lots of different things you can do. So if I wanted to save that copy of pants piece, save. And let's go back to Yumu. If I go home, my workspace, and my resources, there's all my stuff. And then assign that to my student groups if I wanted to. So we do UMU test and then you can add it to a lesson. Create a new lesson for this to resource to call it pants. Save and close. There we go. So I now have a lesson called pants. I go back to my workspace, student groups, UMU test, add one of my lessons. And then we can say pants, save changes. And there we go. So that's now assigned to that class. So if you click on the Studio tab and then tutorials, it has the basics, which is pretty much what I've just done. And then you've got your how-to video. So if I click on that, and then it'll show you some different things to that you can do. One of the brilliant things about this though um, is that you can have the the video playing while you have U Studio open as well. So you can kind of follow exactly what he's doing, and you can do the same thing. You can copy what he's doing as you're going along, which I think is is really really useful. So you can see there. Okay, so to set the tempo or speed of the track. Just click here, you can see the tempo then there. You can do that yourself. You can use these plus or minus keys going along. to change the tempo. So we're going to set. I think the best thing to do is just, just try and play with it. Just try and see what you can do with it and, and get used to using it. I mean, if you're familiar with Cubase or Logic or GarageBand or, or whatever, or BamLab, then it's it's really, really easy to get going with it. Like I said, it is a little bit clunky in iPad, but again, it's it's just playing with it and getting used to it. If something kind of pops into your brain later on, then feel free to, to send me an email. I'm, I'm fairly certain you all have my email address. So so yeah, just, just find me an email and I'll be, I'll be happy to try and answer your questions if I can.